Hey, I'm Evan, head of engineering for RM Stator. Today we're going to talk about our uh, DC headlight conversion high output kit for the uh, Yamaha YFZ450 quads. Um, this is a great kit for these models because these quads were notorious for uh, the charging and lighting system problems. Um, the original setup on these was a stator that had a split coil. So half of the stator coil would charge the battery and the other half would run your headlights directly off of alternating current from the stator. Um, it seems like a great idea, but it didn't work very well. The downside was you had a really poor charging system and you had a poor lighting system. Um, and what would happen is the voltage regulators could fail um, and you would actually have your battery system charging system die. When that happened, your headlight was actually protected by uh, current going to the charging system which would hold the voltage down. When that side dies the headlight voltage can rise unchecked and easily blow up your headlights. Um, not to mention that it just plain didn't charge the battery very well when you had your headlights off. So a lot of owners of these would notice riding around in the day when they would switch their headlights off they would have a dead battery um, which is pretty frustrating. So the ARM stator kit is excellent because it converts your system to a high power, high output stator, which is good for 140 watts. It's about 40 watt increase over the original. Um, a larger voltage regulator to handle the extra power and it converts your headlight um, power over to battery power. So your headlights are now switched um, or powered directly from the battery and you can switch them um, on and off as much as you'd like with no downside. Um, you also don't have as much dimming or uh, poor light at low RPM. Since it's running off the battery, your light output's not really dependent on your engine RPM anymore. So all in all, it's just a really nice upgrade on these quads and it solves their main electrical problems. Um, so this quad, we've actually already installed the kit here and I just have the bodywork sitting on it and everything's loose. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to install the parts on this. It's pretty simple install. Um, here I have our original parts already taken out so I'll show you what they look like. And you can see how small the original voltage regulator is. And then here is our harness that we include that helps adapt your headlight over to battery power. So anyways, um, to get started, uh, we're going to do the stator first, which is on the left side, this cover here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bodywork because we're going to need access to the front of the vehicle. So I'm going to take the seat and the gas tank cover and the side fairing and the fenders off, uh, as well as the headlights. And that gives us access up front. So I'll get that all stripped off and then we're going to zoom in here and show you how to get the stator changed. So first things first, we want to unplug our stator harness so we can um, easily remove it with the stator. Um, it's right up here on the left side of the vehicle above the shock, and you'll see there's two two-wire connectors, a male and a female version. Um, they just have locking tabs you can press in and pull them out. So one is your pickup coil, the pink and white wires are your pickup coil, which is your timing signal for the ignition, and the other is your uh, charging or lighting output. Um, okay, so I've unplugged those, and I'm just going to pull the harness loose and now we're going to go over to the side cover and get it removed. All right, so now that we have our wiring harness loose, I just pulled it back uh, through the frame here so I have it loose uh, from the side cover. Now we can get this uh, removed. So I'm going to remove, uh, well I already have, but you want to remove the, the chain guard here to get it out of the way. And you want to remove your shift lever, which I already have the bolt removed. So that's out. And remove your breather up here. Okay, so make sure you drain your oil first um, or you can tilt the quad up on its side will work too. Um, but it's a good time to do an oil change so might as well drain the oil. Your drain plug's right down here. Um, so first thing you want to do, you have bolts all the way around here that you can see but what you don't know is there's actually two eight millimeter bolts underneath the starter clutch cover here. So you got to make sure to remove those. If you start prying on this cover, you will break this. So you got to make sure you take this off first. Um, two eight millimeter bolts here and you can remove the cover and the starter clutch mechanism. And then you'll see the two bolt holes inside of here. So I've already removed them. Make sure you do that. Um, and then you can remove your bolts the rest of the way around. I always use a, a cardboard template here. Uh, to keep them in place because they're different lengths so it makes it easy to put them back in the right place. And then you can use um, a flat blade screwdriver uh, to kind of pry the cover off gently. There's, there's little um, 
tabs for prying against, one right here, which makes this bracket a good spot to pry against. And then you got to pry over here a little bit. Just be careful around the starter because there's a, a O-ring here that seals the starter inside. And you, you do need to pry against it because it's a tight fit, but you just got to be really gentle and just be really slow. And you can use a rubber mallet and tap around the sides and you can eventually just work it off. All right, so I've already installed our stator here, um, but I'm gonna show you what you need to do. It's very simple. With the side cover removed, your stator is mounted with two Torx bolts. I think they're T25s. Um, so you just back those out and you can drop your new stator right in place. Um, and then you've got, I think, a four and a five millimeter Allen heads on these side, on this side. This is the, uh, the wire bracket that keeps your wires out of the way of the flywheel. And the other is your pickup coil for your timing signal. Um, so they all go back only in the same place. You really can't get them mixed up. Um, there are different size uh, bolts, so there's, there's not much to mix up there. Make sure you use Loctite, blue or red Loctite. Make sure you use it on all of these so they can't back out and hit your flywheel. And then, you know, put your stator back in place, tighten these up, put your pickup coil in, tighten it up. Same with your bracket. Route your wires nicely underneath the bracket from the stator and around the side here up to your grommet location. And then make sure you clean up your gasket surface well with a, a clean um, razor blade or a gasket scraper or something. Um, I always uh, use a new gasket and then use some black RTV on both sides, just a thin layer to seal it. Okay, so once you have all that done, you can put your cover back in place and you kind of line it up. The flywheel will pull it in and there's barrel pins on uh, a couple sides of this so they'll help line the whole cover up. And then make sure you line up at the top here around your starter. And it's a tight fit, so it helps to use a rubber mallet to gently tap the cover in place and make sure that it seals up to the O-ring on the starter. So just take your time, make sure you get it all lined up and tap it back into place. Um, then uh, make sure you put your eight millimeter bolts back in place here before you put the starter clutch back in place. You don't wanna forget those. Once they're in, your starter clutch just slides in. This cover uh, will only go back in one way. These holes are kind of offset, so you can't put it in upside down. So once you do that, um, put your other bolts in all the way around, tighten them up, put your shifter back in place, put your chain guard back in place, and your breather back in place. So that's really it for the stator change. It's really simple. Um, you want to route your wires the way they were originally, which are kind of here behind the oil tank. And then they follow some other wires here through a clip and some more clips in front of the radiator and then on up to your uh, plug area where they will just plug right back into the originals. And one's a male, one's a female. You can't mix them up. They just plug right back in. Okay, so that's it for the stator install, really easy. Um, we're gonna spin this around now and we'll look at the front of the vehicle, which is where your regulator and your wiring harness work will be uh, done. So we're gonna move this around and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna change the voltage regulator first. Now, I've already installed ours, but it's right up here on the front. Um, you just need, uh, the headlights out of the way make it easier, but aren't necessary. But you do need the front plastic uh, fender uh, piece removed. So it's two eight millimeter bolts on either side. You just unscrew those um, and then you can put our new regulator in place and tighten them back up. So really simple to install this. And then your regulator plug, you can trace the wiring on your old one, um, comes right up here to a white four wire connector. So I've already loosened the clip here, but it just removes. Once you put in your new regulator, run the wires over here, line the connector up, plug it in until it clicks and that's it. Really simple install for the regulator. Okay, um, now we're gonna talk about um, the, uh, the modification that we need to do to install our wiring harness. So um, let's set that up and then we'll show you the next shot. Okay, so now we're gonna um, do the prep for installing our wiring harness. Um, the wiring harness is what converts the headlights over to battery power instead of running off the stator. So to start, we need to find this six terminal connector. Um, it's inside of this black plastic uh, sheath here that is up against the steering column. So I've got that all out of the way. We need to um, unplug this connector. So I've already done that and we don't need the bottom part. 
Okay, so what you want to do here, you'll see this connector has six wires in it. And what we need to do is depin one of them. We need to remove one of the wires. The wire that we need is yellow with the red tracer, which you can see here. So it is located in, if you're holding this connector, um, looking straight into it with a locking terminal on top, it's in the upper left corner. So the way to remove it is with a pick, uh, something like this, or a really small screwdriver. And you can put it in place right on top of the terminal, and there's a little plastic locking tab inside. You can lift that up with the pick, and then gently pull the wire out the back, and it'll come right out of the connector. So I've already done that, and here's our loose wire. Now we're done with this six pin connector and I can plug it back in like this. Okay, so we're all done there. Now what we need to do is plug this yellow wire with the red tracer into the new connector that we include with our wiring harness. It's a two pin connector and the wire will just plug right in and click into place. Um, you wanna locate it, if you're holding the connector like this with the two feet on the bottom, and the locking tab on top, the wire goes into the left side of the connector. And if you're not sure, you can hold up our wiring harness we include and match it up so they're kind of plugged into each other. And then you can see that the black wire on our harness is lined up right with the yellow wire with the red tracer. So that'll show you which side it goes in if you're not sure. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in to our harness, so that's all done. And then the only other thing we need to do is tie this into our key switch circuit. So you'll see that our harness has this male and female four wire connector on each side. What that does is go in line with the key switch to provide battery power to the lights. So you can see I have our key switch here, same type of connector. I'm gonna unplug it, and set it out of the way. And then I'm going to grab the harness and I'm going to plug its mating side into the vehicle's side of the key switch harness. And then I'm going to take the other side and it'll plug into our key switch. Okay, so when that's all done, we have the key switch that is in line, uh, or our harness is in line with the key switch and its old connector. And then the single wire is plugged into our yellow wire with a red tracer from the six terminal connector. So that's it as far as the wiring goes. What that has done is now change um, the lighting circuit over to battery power. So once that's done, you can get everything reinstalled. You want to put your key switch back into the, um, the fender and you'll see the key switch is just held in place to the top of the fender with a plastic nut that gets removed. So it's really easy to reinstall. And then put all your body work back on. Um, make sure you put oil back in the motor uh, if you drained it before. Um, and you know, new filter if you changed your oil. Hey, make sure to like our videos and subscribe to the RM Stator YouTube channel. Uh, we wanna keep doing new installation videos. Uh, leave us comments and let us know what parts uh, you'd like a video for. Uh, let us know if you have any suggestions uh, or questions. We're happy to help out. And always check out rmstator.com for our latest products and information.